I think it goes without saying that I have a rather different view of what is going on here than some of my Republican colleagues. Um, there is a well-known practice of regulatory capture where a powerful interest or industry essentially takes over a regulatory agency, and the regulatory agency then, thus captured, delivers decisions that benefit that industry that captured the agency. And I suppose sooner or later it was inevitable that minds of an evil bent would take the stratagem of regulatory capture and apply it to courts, and in particular to our Supreme Court. Now, obviously, one way you control an agency or a court is to control the appointments. And we know very well the Federalist Society turnstile that was run in the Trump administration that put three of these justices on the court. We know very well of the Judicial Crisis Network and its dark money funding that spent tens of millions of dollars related to Supreme Court appointments on advertising campaigns. What we don't know is who was behind all of this, who provided what the Washington Post described as $250 million in money to make all this happen. $250 million is a lot of money, and people don't spend that kind of money unless they want results. And we have no idea, because of secrecy, who is behind this scheme. The next thing, once you've captured an agency, that you want to do is to tell it what to do. And sure enough, we see national right-wing litigation groups that bring cases to the court. There is kind of an expedited fast lane for them to bring cases to the court that they think the captured court will rule for them on. Uh, very unusually, they rush into court and say, Your Honor, we'd like to lose. Please rule against me as quickly as possible so that I can get up to a friendly Supreme Court and we can get our policy work done there. And then behind those groups that fly behind plaintiffs of convenience that they have worked to locate uh, are flotillas of amicus curiae, friends of the court, amici curiae, I should say is the plural, who come in an orchestrated chorus and tell the court what the dark money groups behind them want in this decision. And again, we don't know who's behind them because, again, they're funded by dark money. The whole thing is just wreathed in secrecy, which is usually not a good idea. Most often in a courtroom, people want to know who else is in the courtroom with them. And a masked entity, a front group in a courtroom is a very un-American thing in my view. And of course, what you most want from capturing a regulatory agency or a court is results. And sure enough, we've tracked 80, 80 partisan five to four decisions under Chief Justice Roberts that give clearly identifiable wins to big Republican donor interests. 80 is a lot. I'm not a great lawyer, but I bet you that I could have taken a string of 80 to zero and brought a pretty good bias and discrimination case based on that pattern of behavior. And 80 to zero is the pattern of partisan five to four decisions with Republican donor interests involved. So it should probably come as no surprise when you look at the 80 five to four decisions, they fall, fall into four major categories, as we've pointed out. One is helping Republicans win elections. Another is attacking civil rights. Another is protecting the Republicans' corporate benefactors, particularly from liability. And the fourth, of course, is pushing a far-right social agenda that they can't get legislators to vote for, but an undemocratic court uh, will deliver for them. So it comes as no surprise that when you look at what's been going on in the shadow docket, it's a pretty damn good match with the results that were produced from the capture of the court in those 80 partisan five to four decisions. Again, helping Republicans win elections, taking away civil rights, protecting corporate interests, in this case, particularly landlords and polluters, and pushing a far-right social agenda, such as the far-right social agenda that is uh, represented in this case. So um, my time has expired, and I'll leave it 
at that. I thank the witnesses for bringing this before us, and I think that there are important questions here. We should be having this hearing, and I'm glad we are. Thank you, Senator Whitehouse. Senator